Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> My name is Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. This episode of Science Max is all about generating electricity. Where do we get this electricity that we use all the time? We try to generate as much as we can using human power. Plus solar energy, tidal energy, wind energy, and more. All you need to do is turn the generator. All on this episode of Science Max Experiments at Large. Greetings, Science Maximites. Take a moment and imagine with me, if you will, a time when the only way to light your house was with candles or oil lamps. There was no electricity. That meant no power tools, no video games, no telephones, and worst of all, no TV. Fortunately, we live in a world of electricity. If you've ever lost power in your city or neighborhood, you know how hard it is to get by without electricity, even for one day. But where does it all come from? Where do we get this electricity that we use all the time? We make it. That's the cool thing. And I can show you how to make it as well. Check it out. All you need is an electric motor. Electric motors are pretty simple. All you do is get a battery, and you attach it to the electric motor, and that makes it work. There we go. Attached to the battery, it spins. But if you spin the electric motor, it creates electricity. And that's what we're gonna look at today, creating electricity. We're gonna build a wind turbine, but first you need an electric motor. And you can probably get one from a broken toy. Just make sure that the toy is broken and that the broken part isn't the electric motor. Here's what you need. Index cards or construction paper, scissors, push pins, science tape. It's the same as invisible tape, except I use this one for science. A cork, chopsticks, craft sticks, and modeling clay. And remember, all the steps for this experiment are on our website. To begin, cut the index cards into strips and tape down a push pin so it sticks out. Then fold over the index card and tape it together. Then stick the pin into the cork and repeat that step. If you want as many blades as you can get on your fan, you're welcome to do that. Next, take your modeling clay and stick the chopsticks in, then tape the craft sticks in between with science tape. Then take the motor and stick the cork on the end, then wedge the motor in between the craft sticks and tape it down so it stays put. And there you go a fan that will spin in the wind. You want to adjust the fan blades so they all face on a bit of an angle. That way they will catch the wind and spin. There we go. Now when it spins, it will create electricity. I'll show you with this. It's a multimeter. And a multimeter measures little amounts of electric current. There. The hair dryer makes wind. Spinning the fan blades and <laughs> we are creating electricity. Now, pretty much all electricity that you make comes down to turning a generator. A small motor like this isn't gonna produce a lot of electricity, barely enough to power one tiny little LED, but it's a start. And a good start is all we need, because mm. Today, on Science Max Experiments at Large, we're gonna look at all kinds of different ways of generating electricity. Plus, I wanna find out just how much electricity one human being can generate. Although, one human being is gonna be kinda lonely. I'm gonna need an expert. Oh, I know, Anthony from the Ontario Science Center. He can help. I wonder if he's busy. Well, come on. So I was wondering if you could help me with an experiment. I want to generate as much electricity with human power. What do you think? I think that sounds awesome. Okay, great. Let's go back to Science Max headquarters. Is that the portal? Yeah. Don't worry, all the kinks are worked out. <laughs> I know what it is. It's this. 
Uh, where did you end up? I was in the vents. Oh, I ended up in the bathroom. All right, well, now that we're here. Okay, so this is what I started with. And this is uh, just, you know, an electric motor, right? Right, right. Um, so you can generate electricity, you spin it. So I figured in order to generate more electricity, you get a bigger generator? Exactly, yeah. The bigger the generator, the bigger the magnet, the more the copper, the more the electricity. Oh, uh, well, you know what we should do is we should just get an even bigger one, like a giant one that they use in like at a power plant or something, or? Mm, not quite. That would be too big for a person to be able to turn. It'd just oh. be impossible. So you think this is a good size? I think this is a great size. Okay, so that's that's good. This is called a multimeter. We're gonna hook up the wires. I will do black to uh, black. Black to black. And red. And as you turn our generator, we can see just how much electricity we're, we're generating. Okay, so. Here, you hold on to that. This, and, and I'll can turn start the turning. generator. Now it's time to play How Much Electricity Did They Make? 2.4 volts, yeah, it's not bad. Oh, 2.4, yeah, it's not great. That's just enough to power a small LED flashlight. Better keep trying, boys. I got some handles here that we're going to attach ah, to the end of the generator so yeah. we can spin it. Okay, let's try. Uh, no matter how fast I crank the large handle, I couldn't make any more electricity than before. Okay, let's uh, try something else. I get, I, but it's a smaller handle. Perfect, okay, that's, yeah. That's good? Yeah, well, maybe it'll let us get more spins in. Oh right. yeah, because I don't have to make as big a circle. Exactly. Yeah, it's working already. We're up to like 3.5. Now, how much electricity is Phil making? 4.5. That's the same as three AA batteries. Maybe enough to power a toy car. Still a long way to go. Yeah, it's, it's a lot higher with the faster spins. Oh, all right, all right, you, you okay? I'm okay. Maybe we could use like some gears or something like that. Oh yes, you know that's a good idea because the the this circle that I'm making here, I can only go so fast. So yeah. Maybe with gears you can do one circle here equals like ten circles on the other gear. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so kind of like the like the gears on on like a, on like a bike. Yeah, the gears on a bike or something like that. A bike. Oh, of course. Oh. Yeah. So okay. So we get a bike and we attach the back tire to. The generator. The generator, and then you can use the pedals of the big gear to power the small gears. Okay, great. Right. We'll go get a bike. Yeah. Yeah, high five. Uh, All, right. All right. Oh, right, they're over here. This is a generator. It generates electricity when you spin it. But how does it work? What wizardry is inside? Well, actually, generating an electric current is fairly simple. All you need is two things. First, you need a conductor, like this coil of copper wire, and you need a magnet. Now, this is a galvanometer. It measures small amounts of electric current, and I have my copper wire attached to it. Watch as I put the magnet inside the copper. I get a little bit of an electric current, and then I take it out, it goes in the other direction. A little bit going this way, and then I take it out, a little bit going that way. Positive, negative, positive, negative. This kind of current that goes back and forth is called alternating current, or AC. It's the same kind of electricity you have in your house. But here's the cool thing, watch this. I put the magnet in and I leave it. It goes back to zero. You only get electricity when you move the magnet. All right, so let's create our generator. Instead of starting with a copper coil like this, what if we just had the magnet and we have it staying still like that and we move the conductor past it like spinning? Hmm? It's good, but not great because we're only getting a little bit of electricity as it passes. So let's make it more efficient. Let's put in some more magnets, one on either side and one on the top. And now when we spin it, it goes past all of these magnets, and every time we get a little bit of electric current. Well, this is how a generator works. If you take an electric motor or a generator apart, you can see there's a coil of copper wires on the shaft, and it spins around like this. And on the inside, there are magnets. So there you go. When you put it together and spin it, you get an electric current. Or if you put an electric current in it, it will spin, just like an electric motor. And that is how a generator works. Anthony and I are trying to create as much electricity as we can using just human power. But so far, it hasn't been going so well. 
It all comes down to how fast we can spin the generator. Maybe we could use like some gears or something like that. In order to get it spinning really fast, we're gonna use a okay. bike. It's just a matter of getting a bike, taking off the wheel, putting it on a stand. It is now a stationary bike. It'll be even more stationary once we screw it down. And attaching the generator. All right, the bike generator, bike rater. What's what should we call this thing? Uh, bike nomader. Bike nomader. Mm -hmm. I like it. So okay, let's go over what we've got here. Okay, so we've got uh, two gears. We got a big one. We got a small one. We turn our pedals, and the, the big gear turns the small one. So this this is the whole point of this build is so that we can get one revolution here means a whole bunch is spinning exactly. there. Exactly. The right, more right. we get here, the more our generator spins and the more electricity we get. We get tons. Awesome. And uh, obviously using bike because you're using your legs. Uh-huh. The strongest. strongest muscles in your body. Awesome. Uh-huh. Okay, so now what's with this horn? <laughs> That is a loud horn. I know, I know, I tried to warn you. That is great, I love that. So Anthony and I hop on and give it a pedal. We pedal as hard as we can and we produce a pretty good amount of electricity. How much electricity did they produce? We got up to maybe like 18 there. We did a pretty good job. That's enough for a power tool, like a drill. It's, it's good, you know what, this, this works well, I think, for keeping a good number for a long period of time. Yeah. So we can get up to like yeah. 18, 20, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, we can't really get any higher than that. Yeah, you know what we need is like one really hard pull like all of a sudden. That way you can get like a spike. Yeah, you're right. So it's like instead of putting all that effort into a going for a long time, yeah. you put all the effort into one quick motion. Exactly. Yeah, good idea. So you wrap a rope around here and then you just pull it. Exactly, exactly. And that'd be a really fast motion. Uh-huh. Spin it really quick and get a very high number. High spike, exactly. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we're gonna have to take the bike apart though. Uh. Okay, well, right. guess well it's yeah. science. Okay, cool. So I'll just get oh, you know what? We actually don't have to take the whole bike apart. We just have to take the generator off. Oh, right. Okay, okay hang cool. on a sec. I got it. And maybe we should attach the horn to the next thing, too. some electricity. But what do you choose to generate that electricity? Hydro, nuclear, coal, solar? Who knows? I do, I know, and soon, so will you. In order to generate electricity, you need to turn the generator. Turn the generator. One of the most common ways to turn the generator is to use one of these. It's a steam engine. Usually they're a lot bigger. You see, you heat the water to boil it and turn it to steam, which works a piston, which turns the generator. Huh? Pretty amazing, right? But what it really boils down to is heating water to make steam. Boil water to make steam to turn the generator. Coal power. Burn the coal to boil water to make steam to turn the generator. Natural gas, that's different, right? Nope, burn the gas to boil water to make steam to turn the generator. Nuclear power, that's different, right? Nope, it creates heat, which you use to boil water to make steam to turn the generator. Wind power, we don't even need heat for that. Just use the wind to spin the fan to turn the generator. Hydropower. Just pour water across something that spins to turn the generator. No matter what, making electricity always comes down to turning the generator. It's always yada yada, yada yada, turn the generator. Except for solar. Solar does not work like that. But other than that, it's always yada yada, yada yada to turn the generator. And now you know your electricity generation. <laughs> hey, Ramona, you wanna come and give me a hand over here? My arm is getting tired. Whew, it is hot out here. Oh, in order to generate electricity, you need to spin a generator. Most forms of electricity generation work like that, but not solar. Solar panels like this one generate electricity from the sun's energy. So how do they do it? Well, 
This is a solar panel. Okay, it's not really a solar panel. I just sort of put this together, but it works the same way. There are two plates, and on these plates are electrons. I've got golf ball electrons up here, ping pong ball electrons down here, but they're all the same thing. Now, this happy little fellow is a photon, energy from the sun in handy dandy particle form. What happens is photons come from the sun and hit the top plate and knock some electrons from one side to the other, like this. And that knocks over some electrons. Now these extra electrons travel up a wire in the form of electricity and we can use them to do work for us. Then they change to the other charge, go back, and we start the process all over again. That is how solar panels work. But remember, it only works when there's sun and photons. <laughs>
And as I fall, that spindle will turn. Exactly. And hopefully, the speed of me falling and holding and yanking it down as hard as I can will be the biggest spike of electricity yet. That's right. We'll be measuring it on our multimeter. Here. OK. OK. Ready? You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Three, two, one. I jump down, and my whole body weight pulls on the line. <laughs> Oh, that was awesome. That was like our biggest spike ever. That was amazing. All right, high fives. Yeah. Biggest spike ever. Is it enough to power my house? Nope. How much electricity did Phil generate? Almost 30 volts. How much does he need to power his house? 120 volts. He's still off by quite a bit. Well, we've learned something. Nuclear. Uh, wind, hydro, uh, solar, natural gas, coal power. It's all great ways to generate electricity. Yeah. And human power, not so much. Not as good. No. But human power is more fun. Yeah, way more fun. Yeah, so you, your turn? Yes! OK, OK. Me, you you me, take the helmet, and I'll take the multimeter. OK. And then we'll go, and we'll do it again. OK. OK. Wait, I got to wind it up. Science Max is a show where we take small experiments and do them big. If you want to try these experiments yourself, go to our website for instructions. But not all the experiments on Science Max are the kind you should try at home. This one, yes. This, no. Try this, don't try this. A big yes, a big no. I, I don't know how you could possibly do this one at home. And remember, if you're ever not sure, ask an adult. Thanks for watching Science Max Experiments at Large. So this is a solar panel, and this is a train. You're generating electricity. <laughs> You're in the way of my solar panel. It's, oh, no, it's spinning the other way. Elect I forgot a step. I forgot a step. The water in the oceans doesn't stay still. <sighs> the thing in the background, it totally threw me off. What was that? OK, OK, OK. Where were we? We were 